Well, there's not a whole lot to see under the hood here, but we'll take a look anyway. Appears to be a later model small block and a very puny one at that. Ain't really a whole lot to look at here. I'm sure we'll replace that with something a little bit better. Well, we've had a couple of people ask about the Impala because it, it is the the picture on the, you know, the page. So, but yes, I do have the car. Um, it is officially, as of right now, it is a project. The car has been in my possession about two years. Unfortunately, I'm just now getting an interest in the car. Um, I just seen it as far too gone to do anything with and I had zero interest in it. It's a shame that the car is so rough because it was it was so complete. Like it was complete down to the AC belt. Um, but it's just rough. The motor, a 327, it's factory 327, three speed on the column car, uh, factory four barrel car. Several weeks ago, actually the weekend before we started the YouTube channel, my son and I pulled the motor. The, the motor ended up being a 66 327 and I was blown away at how clean it was when I pulled the valve covers. Standing where I am right now, I could look into the into the cylinder head and could read the, the casting number. Um, there were 462 heads. But unfortunately, water got in the motor and, and I believe number two cylinder was the worst one. It was stuck and it actually it froze and cracked a cylinder. The block can be sleeved. Um, the cylinder head was pretty bad off, but you know, what? those heads are what, 66? That makes them nearly 60 years old. Um, they would need extensive work. I'm sure, you know, obviously seats, I'm sure guides, tons of work. If you wanted to spend the money or if I wanted to spend the money, then it, you know, potentially put the motor back together. But luckily I do not need to mess with that motor for this project but from what i know about the car you know from the from the data tag it was black on black tuxedo black interior it's a factory ac car factory 327 car four barrel three on the tree um sadly this would be an amazing car today and had it not you know if it wasn't so rough it's far from restorable but now I see that it's far from you know, garbage too. It, it, it'll, make a, it'll make a great good enough cruising rod. And that's all I plan to do. Street sign floor, street sign trunk, make it stop, make it steer, and burnouts. Burnouts is the number one. And I shouldn't have a problem with the burnouts because my, my dually, the one you see in the, you know, in the corner of the video sometimes, it's a, it was a 454 truck, very solid motor. I had, there should have been no reason I pulled that motor out, but I wanted to pull the motor for a six liter 4L80 e swap. So I still have the big block. The big block is absolutely tip top, a great motor. So my plans are to put the 454 in, I'm gonna do a camshaft intake, you know, clean it up, make it look nice. And I'm gonna put the three speed back behind it and it must be a three on the tree. So that's the kind of the rough plans with the car. Um, I'll walk you around the car. We can look at the damage. Um, it's got some, it's not short of patina. That, that's for sure. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a walk around here. Just check it out. The grill and headlights are, you know, the bumper. Everything in the front is, is amazingly there. Like I said, this car, I put some pictures up that I had from about two years ago, and I'll probably pull some of the, the engine parts out and show you the damage and all. But the tag says 77. The best I can tell, the inspection was a 78-79 inspection. Like I said, it was black, but at some point, this almost looks like house paint, but I don't think it is, but it is rough. I'm not sure I'll, I'll attempt a fluff and buff on this car. It'll probably just get the lens seat oil. Unfortunately, I have already pressure washed it, but 
it could probably it could probably show you know a little bit of more improvement if I did it again it, it is on rally wheels which is kind of cool I'm not a big fan of rallies but it's got matching wheels that says something um, I thought that piece was gone I got to looking through the trunk and that piece was in the trunk the roof I think has some amazing just just great characteristic where the the black is coming back through and it's just got you can see some lead right here a little bit of damage here I mean it has had some extensive extensive bondo work I picked a lot of this out because I figure it's just better off not being there and holding water um the doors most of that on the bottom has got a skim of bondo the rockers are strangely solid um the quarters aren't too bad off probably should have videoed this in the daylight um the back seats were in the trunk um i'll just clean them up and leave them like they are it's kind of cool that center speaker the trunk unfortunately it is just rough. All the tail lights are there. All the trim. The bumper straight. I like the Six Flags bumper sticker. I'd rather be at Six Flags. So I'm gonna try to put some maybe some clear gorilla tape over that to save what's left. It's got a nice dent here. Um I thought these cars came with dual antennas. I don't know if that was some sort of an option, but there's there's no hole on the inside. I thought that maybe the damage and they just deleted it. All the glass is good. It may not be scratch free, but it's all there. I mean, the car, it's got some dents, but it's fairly straight. I mean, it's got some Bondo. This here, funny enough, I never really paid no attention to this until the vice grip garage buick episode and it made perfect sense after he talked about his buick having damage in the same spot um called it the grandma snag i think it was but it makes sense because this would be your blind spot you know with those yellow parking stobs or whatever but funny enough it's got the same damage in the same spot and I think the body man was a must have been an art man because I picked this out of it. I mean, she's a good three sixteenths thick in some places, but it was it was kind of hanging off at the bottom, and I figured it would just be better off if I pulled it off. So, and this was actually all still. You can see the light rust from my rubbing it there, but it's definitely got some. Old school screw and slide hammer dent pullings. The rocker looks like it's got a fair coat of Bondo on it. Fender has a little vent hole there. But this door's in pretty good shape. The floors, on the other hand, actually, this car even scares me to get in. Like, I, I just can't, I can't bring myself to comfortably sit in this thing and and pilfer around i did finally get into the glove box found some interesting things in the glove box um some i'll show you i found the owner's manual to this awesome audio box a track it would be sweet if that would work I, i've not i've not really tried a whole lot yet um, here's a did find this it's a Virginia State Inspection slip from 1976. Um, I think there's a cigar in there. You're more than welcome to that if anybody's interested. I'm not. Um, I'm not sure if it has brakes, probably not. The uh, factory AC with uh, aftermarket walnuts, looks like. But yeah, this, this thing sketches me out. The floors are, you know, drafty to say the least. From what I can tell, 
the frame is scaly but not bad off um from what i can tell if, with it sitting on my trailer i mean that that really doesn't say a whole lot but we're gonna get this thing on jack stands and shake on it with the air hammer see what falls out see what new holes appear um i guess assess how bad things are um, but it was strange routing for the ac condenser line but condenser fan still had the generator i mean everything the I, I really felt like the 327 would tell us the story on why the car was parked um i told my boy that i was betting i was betting it had a spun bearing but uh it uh, turns out that the bearings looked amazing and the clutch actually still had the barcode on the pressure plate like it if it had any miles on it it was very very little so and they had it didn't have water in the block when i pulled it apart it did still had green good looking antifreeze in it uh, still full of oil in the pan so i'm guessing maybe these surface these rust holes in the hood there's three or four the air the air cleaner lid wasn't rusted through but it could have went by the water could have went by where the wing nut tightens up so the carter four barrel afb was was seized but that's the only thing i can think of um, but i'll drag some of the, the engine parts out tomorrow and i'll show you some of the damage uh, it's sad to to see the the motor hurt like that you know maybe the trans is bad i don't know we'll find that out but it probably had the biggest mouse nest i've ever seen in the bell housing so at least somebody got some use out of it but we're going to get this thing on jack stands and see what the bottom looks like shake it down good sit down and discuss just how big a project this is it's going to happen i mean i don't know how much how much effort I'll put into it as far as anything but safety goes. Fix the floors, things like that. We'll show you what we find. I'm going to give you a daytime walk around of the Impala. It's pretty bad. But I'm going to show you all the bad. Um, maybe you have some suggestions. Maybe just haul it to the scrapyard. I don't know. But uh, it, like I said, it's pretty bad. I'm going to show you all of the bad I can. And then we're gonna break out the air hammer and just give this thing a good shake all around, not on the body panels, of course, but frame, suspension, inside the trunk, places it won't hurt anything, and just try to just see how much stuff actually falls out from under the car. And you know, just kind of see what's a, what's laying on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna definitely go back with the pressure washer and try to wash out these frame rails. The frame is crazy solid, but it does have you know, almost 60 years of, of junk inside the frame, dirt, whatever. So this thing came from pretty much the, the coal mine in southwestern portion of Virginia. So I'm sure back in its day, there was tons of dirt roads, gravel roads, that sort of thing. And that's probably what's just been up inside there. But let's, uh, let's take a walk around it, look inside of it, inside the trunk. Let's take a walk around this thing. You know the it's got some some serious rust here like i showed you on the on the top of the the hood there a little bit there some extensive body work on this side the floor well yeah it's pretty bad and this is all that's left of the carpet and i pulled the seat out last night and there was just a mountain of these walnuts falling out of the seat and then I, anybody want a baby rattle 
but the squirrels just lived in that thing for generations apparently but as you can see holes here holes there that actually gets up into the rocker which kind of scares me um, holes there obviously here the tunnel looks solid the back floor is thin but yeah, well it's bad too holes here i'm really concerned about this back here the wheel well is fairly crusty same kind of thing going on over there and then obviously big vent hole there but that's what we're working with for the inside I was spraying the windows down, the window tracks with some PV sauce to get things trying moving again. I can get this driver's side to roll down, the passenger side's not working so great. I'm afraid to even try these these back quarter glasses or whatever they are. Um, some of the things I found in the trunk, it looked like this trim looks new. Well, I mean, it's not new now, but it doesn't look like it's ever been installed. This piece is old, and this actually broke off a while ago from here. This obviously down the side. I found this piece in the in the trunk too. Um, the trunk lid is pretty much killed. Luckily the tail lights are there and all the badges are there. But They did a serious color change on this thing. I mean, they painted inside the trunk and all. But trunk floor, mouse nest. Oh, let's, you see it's pretty bad up in there where the, this was where the gas fill is. Rotted there, back in here, pretty bad. All of this, um, that'll probably actually fall apart with shaking it with the air hammer. I got some rust there, and see it's some down in there. You can actually see through the all of this seam right here, but and then the. for the trunk lip is pretty much shot all this <laughs> pretty bad here and I, I'm not even sure what the what to do about that is completely not attached anymore same way or the water and the pine needles and whatever else just sit and you know stayed damp and there's there's somehow walnuts and acorns inside this trunk trunk lid nice dent here um, i'm missing one letter i guess i'll get on ebay and try to find it oh this was also in there this looks like i believe this is the same panel where the tag goes and it was it was bought new obviously it's not new now but it's some sort of wax coating on it. It's got a GM sticker here and whatever these numbers mean. I thought that was kind of neat. Trim's coming off. Got a little bit of body work here. This fender basically lost all of the red, which is weird. Looks like I kind of put it on there. But I definitely did not. When I pressure washed it, I may have may have caused some of that steel to come back through. That bare steel to come back through. But I'm going to get the wheels off. Let my boy fire up the air hammer and just watch all the the dirt and the rust and critters 
fall out of it. There's stuff falling out back here on me. Really? Like, there's stuff falling out of the fender lip while I'm under there watching. Well, found a new hole. You can see my fingers. My shirt. Huh? Got speed hole. Look at all this dirt falling out. Unreal. I think it might have been a pace car at the dirt track. <laughs> There's just so many places for that stuff to get into. You know, you figure in the 60s and 70s and that part of the state. I'm sure paved roads were, you know, falling a few between. I'd hate to follow behind this car on the way back from Virginia on 77. But that's just from one spot. He's going to keep on hammering on this thing and uh, we'll do one side and see how much has fell out of there and then we'll show some more of the other side.
after you wiped it all down? Oh, yeah. All that. That's not even close to what's in there. I'm afraid to hammer it much more because I'll knock a hole in it. I mean, I can see a pile of dirt in there about half deep in the frame rail. I don't have my light, but it's like, I think I would be better off just knocking a hole in the bottom of the frame. And I mean, it ain't take much. I can put my finger through there. But that's why it rotted just somehow just packed slap full of dirt. It's a big piece of rust. That's a lot of mess. We'll go back. And I'll just take the water hose, probably no pressure washer, and just let the frame rails wash out as best as I can. Some of this I will fix, like these frames. Actually, it, it's so thin, it's kind of deforming the frame a bit, me beating on it with the air hammer, which, I mean, it is just packed. There's, well, it feels like there's a mouse nest in there too. Yeah, a little mouse house. So, if he's in there, he's got a headache now. Right here. Can you see in that hole? Here, see. Yeah. If you can see in that hole, that frame hole, it is just packed full. And that is for the up swoop to clear the rear end. And it is just full of dirt. All right. I got it, uh, got it sprayed down with with water no pressure washer yet an unbelievable amount of stuff came out of these frame rails and all these good hiding spots for dirt you know like i was saying where it came from in virginia and i'm sure a, a large part of its life is just dirt roads gravel roads so it's many years of just dust and then go figure the or factor in the the winters and the salt and the mud you know dirt roads and gravel roads turn to mud after a good snow so i mean if you look at all that then really the car is in as shape as it you know it could be expected um the only two things i'll probably do with it today or in this video rather is i'm gonna pour, pour some brake fluid in the master see where it leaks because I, I imagine it will leak I, the master is probably bad I, I don't even think i've ever even hit the pedal um how i used to stop it before when i unloaded it or moved it around was i just leave it in gear and use the clutch the motor was seized so it kind of act as a brake i'm going to pull the fuel tank and see what's hiding in there um, i'm not going to use that tank anyway actually i noticed that the the sending unit wires were actually corroded off the sending unit so and uh, i believe there's some belling wire holding in the <laughs> the left side of the tank so it shouldn't be that big a deal to get out uh, i'll show you some of the parts of the 327 that came out of it and uh i guess i can show you the big block which everybody's everybody knows what a big block looks like and uh i guess We'll go over the plans, what I have in store and have in mind. Uh, but I'm going to put some brake fluid in this master. And while we're waiting on it to leak out, we'll drag this fuel tank out. 
I can't imagine how much of a waste of time this is and brake fluid. I am not believing this. There is actually brake fluid in this master. How in the world? I seriously cannot believe there's brake fluid in there. Let me hit the pedal. I highly doubt anything happened. Now the push rod's sticking in the master. I felt it push in once, but it didn't come back out. I'm gonna get a hammer and uh, beat on that and see if it uh, see if the piston will push back out. It actually did. Slip that drum back on that passenger side just in case there is a slight chance that it has a brake pedal. Now it's not moved, it's, it's, the piston is not moved again, so I'll just go ahead and say we're going to need a master and gosh I, I know those lines aren't going to I'm going to start spraying everything down with PB Blast today because this line's already kinked up at this junction block so and it looks like this line actually may be leaking right there so I'm sure I'm gonna get a full lesson in brake line hard brake line plumbing so, uh, we'll leave that there I'll grab a master and 50 feet of brake line because I know this stuff is not I'm gonna come loose easily. It's kinked there too. Let's see if we can get this fuel tank down. And uh, we'll go from there. While I'm under here, let's just go for a ride and look around since it's daylight. tank the custom wire strap gave up I think I'm just gonna reach up in there saws all the rubber coupling saws all that strap and get out of the way sounds pretty empty but she is so bad See some crust, whatever that is. <laughs> but a 
it's definitely scaly. Now let me get this tank done. If I can get in there. I could have just went and got the right pliers. There's actually a little gas in that. I guess it's older than me, I imagine. Uh, anybody want a slightly used 64 in pallet tank? Free to a good home. If there was ever a headliner for something to crawl out of, I feel real sure it's this one. So I'm gonna make this real short to the point. What's my plans for this clapped out pile? I wanna drive it. I wanna do burnouts. That's really about all it's good for. But it's going to have big block power. Not a lot of it, but it'll be there. I know most of you are saying, why? Why even do this? People I know are probably thinking the same thing. Why not? Just good enough. Just go to cruise ends. Just get out. Enjoy these old things. Because if it... If it's not just good enough, then it's just going to sit in somebody's backyard and go to nothing. I know another one of these cars is sitting. This headliner is crazy. I know where another one of these cars is just rotting away about five minutes from here. Just sitting in a backyard, and I can only see just a portion of the grill when I drive by. I'd, I should really stop or leave a note or something, but this day and age, I'm a little... I'm a little hesitant to just go and knock it on random doors because, you know, who does that anymore? But we're not restoring this. Nobody's going to restore this. We're going to halfway do these pans, and I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to be up front on this. This is going to be a struggle for me, a massive struggle, because I have never built anything just good enough. I'm not saying I'm professional quality. But it's going to be a struggle for me to just to turn a blind eye to some of this stuff and to make it just good enough. I've never built a, I hate even using the term rat rod. I just don't like it. I've never built anything, just, I've never done a good enough rod, whatever you want to call it. But I am going to save it or slow its death down as best I can and have as much fun with this thing as I can. I mean, it's a factory AC car. The chances this crappy, rusted out pile of Impala could have air conditioning again is fairly decent, which would be even better to pull up to a cruising in midsummer and this scary looking junk with the air condition on while listening to a big block through open headers, fender well dump headers. So. Until next time, 
I'm not exactly sure what the next video will be. Would be another one on this. I do have a will it run uh, project going as well. I did a little filming of that last weekend. That'll be fun to see if that see if that if that item <laughs> see if that thing will run again. I'm not going to say much about it because uh, nobody knows about it. Nobody knows what I have. So and until then, thanks for watching Left for Dead Garage. I appreciate all the subscribers. Um, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns about this car, if you know where a decent parts car is, where I can get a, a, a trunk lip, or floors with half as many holes, or if you know where some retired road signs are so I could use for floorboards, um, leave it down in the comments. Let me know. I want to try to do this thing as it's just good enough as possible, other than the motor. And I will put some effort into that, because, you know, why not? Pop the hood, and there's a fresh, clean 454 there. It, it should really throw a, you know, throw somebody for a loop. I hope, anyway. Don't forget to, to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more of this, this car and, the, you know, the other projects that I have. Somehow, I have no shortage of that. Um, I don't know if that's luck or a curse, but I have several. Um, and thanks for watching Left 4 Dead Garage. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you later.